advantage is about uh, the pressure, no, the pressure of managers. You know, when you, when it becomes decentralized, it means you can give delegation to your subordinates. It reduces your workload. So at least you can focus on other things. Yeah. Do you get the point there? Do you get the point guys? Yes. The fourth one. Workers get the opportunity to be creative and share their ideas. Yeah. So because you can take decisions on your own, in the course of you taking decisions, you, you wouldn't just take that decision, you would have think twice. It becomes a think tank for you. Like every now and then you have to come up with solutions. So the kind of solution you come up, you can share the ideas with people. Yeah. So you become creative because you are allowed to take decision. Is it clear? Yes. yes. And the last one, it provides more promotion opportunities at different managerial levels. Yeah, you are doing good now. You'll be promoted. That's the point. And remember I said in delegation, when you continue to delegate authority, you are preparing better managers. Do you get it? Yes. When you start delegating authority, you are preparing yeah, better yes, managers. And you are agreeing what is better, centralized or this it depends on the, the work, the, work. The, the operations. So you have to understand the kind of operations you, you are in, your objectives, and why you have to take that decision about being centralized or decentralized. Mm -hmm. But once it's about decentralization, it needs expertise. Yes. You mm -hmm. need to be sure about your workers. Because you are making, uh, making them responsible. You are making them responsible. So whatever decisions they take may make or mark the organization. Yes. That's why if you if you think, oh, you don't want a bad reputation for your company, you use centralized. Do you see it? Yeah. So that's why it has advantages and disadvantages. Now let's go to the problems about decentralized system. Number one. Senior managers may lose control of resources. Because you can take decision, you can, you can take decision, I can take decision, everyone can take decision. The so the we might, the manager will not, will lose the grip yes. of resources. Yes. So when you have to say, oh, I took the decision, oh. So the manager might not be doing anything. He has nothing to do. Do you get so it? What's the point of being So what's the point of you being a manager yeah. when you have lost everything? So cost may be higher owing to less standardization and more variability in decision making process. If it is centralized, decision is unique. If it is centralized, decision is what? Unique. But if it is decentralized, your way of thinking will be different from my way of thinking. My way of thinking will be different from your way of thinking. Your way of thinking will be different from his own way of thinking, and so on. So, when, the way you're going to solve the problem will be different from the way she's going to solve the problem. So this might incur more cost for the business. Do we get the point here? Yes. They said cost may be higher owing to less standardization. It is standardized if it is central. So that means we are following a specific standard. But it's, it's, going to be, it's not going to be standardized because every individual has their own unique way of doing <laughs> things. So your approach will be different from my approach. As a result, it is not standardized. So this might make us to incur more cost. That is another problem for decentralization. Is it clear? Yes. The third one. Some employees may not have the ability to make decisions. You see? You allow them to take decisions, but they don't, they lack the ability to take decisions. So it's not for the company. It's not good for the company, yes. Do you understand? Are you here, please? The last one. Some employees may not welcome the extra responsibility. Maybe because it's not financially rewarded. Yes, yes. So how would I be taking this? How would I be taking for you? They're not, not paying me. Not paying me enough. Yes. So you are the manager. Take your, you are getting paid for that. Why do I have to start thinking for you? Think for yourself. I don't want to take that additional responsibility. So workers might think that way. Yeah. Yeah. Is it clear, guys? Yes. Yeah. We move on, please. Yeah. Really? No, it's yeah. This is the last part. Okay, okay, so now chart and growth. They said as businesses grow, if, yes. As soon as the business expands, the organizational chart will change. Because at that point in time, you might need more managers. Because your business is growing. You might need more employees because your business is growing. So look at what they said here.
The reason why the owner of the business, the reason why a small business will have the owner centrally taking decision is because the owner of the business might not even have the financial capability to pay, to pay managers. So it's difficult for him or her to pay extra. He doesn't have. So she takes charge or he takes charge. As businesses grow, they may introduce a traditional structure. This is where the structure is based on hierarchy and decision making is shared throughout the business. So, traditional structure is just like you have the manager, the assistant manager. That's traditional. In some business, we have the matrix. This is where employees are put into teams that cut across department roles. They, are, they, may, they may work together on a specific project, designing a new product, or for example, okay. But as soon as the business expands bigger, you have to start picking up matrix structure. Yes. For matrix structure, you have a team that works on a project. Do you get the point here? Yes. For matrix structure, it means you are going to put different people into a group. They become a team to work on a business project. That is what matrix structure is. Please go down. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. So this is a matrix structure. You want to zoom in? No. Okay, zoom in. Let's see. All right, thank you. So this is a typical matrix structure. Here, you're going to have a project. As soon as you have the project, you have the project manager. So this group, one, two, three, four, five, you are in the group. There's a project that you have to manage. You'll be the project manager. That is what a matrix structure is about. Do you understand matrix structure here? Yeah. Look, this is production, this is marketing, human resources, accounting. All these individuals will be put in a group because for a project, you need marketing. For a project, you need finance. For a project, you need human resources. So you, you take each individual with his, his or her own expertise together to form a group to execute a project. That's what matrix structure is about. Do you get it? Yes. Picking individuals with different expertise to form a team to execute a project. That is what they did. This is a project. So we have the manager, so we have production, individual in production, marketing, human resources, accounting. They come together for this project. Do we get it? Yes. So they're going to be a head, which is what? 